Senate votes to advance foreign aid package with assistance for Ukraine and Israel. Well, this is the Senate. 67 to 32, though, that's a pretty good majority for Israel and Ukraine. Look, people say that America, people say America is socialist, people say America is fascist. I advance to you the position that America is actually enlightenedly, uh, neutral in an enlightened fashion, giving money to both fascists and anti-fascists in the same bill. You know, we're really morally balancing things out here. It'll next go to the House, where it's unclear whether or not Speaker Mike Johnson would even hold a vote on it. I would be very, very, very surprised if the House passes it. America is a pay pig, if anything. I mean, we have the money for it. Did you see Ukraine replace its top general? I did. Volodymyr Zelensky fires top Ukraine army commander, Valery Zaluzhny, to be replaced by commander of land forces, Oleksandr Sirsky. Close enough. Valery was asked to resign last week, but refused to do so. I don't actually know what the nature is of the beef between them. I haven't been caught up on recent uh, Ukraine stuff ever since the war became an intractable, you know, uh, slog for both sides. There's not much day to day stuff to report on, at least unless you know more than I do, like Dylan Burns. G. Yeah, G. From what I can tell, Ukraine has been underperforming on certain stuff. Uh, yeah, I, well, I mean, I, both sides have, right? Russia has been underperforming since the war began. Uh, now everyone's underperforming. Nobody's happy with where things are at the moment. You know, they're, they're, they're pretty much both stuck in the mud. The general wants a massive unpopular conscription of 500,000 men. Zelensky said no, and that's causing a beef. Jesus, that would be politically disastrous. Zelensky refused to quit. The decision to push ahead with the dismissal is seen as a risky move for Zelensky, giving Zelensky's sky-high approval ratings among Ukrainians. Sirsky, his replacement, has a mixed reputation among frontline troops, with claims he's been indifferent to the lives of soldiers during operations. I wonder why that is. If he's the current commander of land forces, it's possible that, like, he's easier to blame for bad stuff that happens. Like, the top army commander, obviously, is the one most responsible for broader operations in the field, right? But maybe it's like, if something bad happens, people point one rung up and they go to commander of land forces rather than going, oh, it's the top guy. That's This is like a classic bureaucracy thing where, where whenever anything good happens, you take credit for it. But when something bad happens, you make sure that somebody beneath you uh, takes the fall. That kind of thing. The general is a popular guy with the military that has aspirations for presidency. He wants a more defensive war, whereas Zelensky wants to take back things like Crimea. The general also wants a conscription, which makes him unpopular. So the general is popular with the military, but not with the civilians. Is that correct? The general is popular with the entire population now? Okay, just not for the for the conscription thing specifically. Gotcha, okay. Imagine if there was a coup. That, I mean, that's usually a risk in situations like this, but... Zelensky is very popular. I don't think that's very likely in this case. Some observers have suggested the decision was at least partially motivated by a fear that Zelushny could become a potential political opponent in the future as political debate and infighting slowly returns to Ukraine after a period of national unity following the invasion. In an eight-minute video explaining the decision, Zelensky denied any political... Wait, I want to see that video. Is it in English? Or at least subtitled in English? I want to see the video. Show me the video. I'm looking for the video. Video. This is a video. All right, tonight we have more breaking news. A stunning move from the Ukrainian I don't think this President is the Zelensky. Video. After firing his top general, the man who has commanded the war against Putin, President Zelensky then did a seemingly total about face, calling General Valery Zeluzhny his quote commander in chief today. The two coming face to face for a war cabinet meeting. Now, Zelensky was expected to announce Zeluzhny's replacement. Fred Plaikin is out front. Since Moscow's forces invaded Ukraine almost two years ago, General Valery Zaluzhny has been the man behind the military effort to push the Russians back. A successful effort, but one requiring great sacrifices in Ukrainian blood. Zaluzhny, a respected commander close to his troops. The path to our victory is very hard, he said at a military funeral, and the price for this victory is the lives of our warriors, the best citizens of Ukraine who have stood in the defense of the country with weapons in their hands. And Ukraine's president, Volodymyr Zelensky, appeared to fray. Zelensky seemingly critical of his top general's strategy.
I have working relations with Zaluzhny. He has to answer for results on the battlefield as commander-in-chief together with the general staff, Zelensky said. There are many questions. Zaluzhny remains extremely popular. A December Ukrainian poll finding nearly 90% supported him. Holy compared shit. To around I, so what, what has he done that has led to his popularity? Like, obviously, leading the country in a war is a pretty, you know, popular thing to do. Um, when the war is for your own survival. But I'm curious is if there have been any like specific um, statements he's made or strategies, the counteroffensive maybe, but the counteroffensive didn't do as well as it was expected to. We actually have the statement here. Poll, Ukrainians trust in Zelensky declines to 62%. Trust in military solution remains high. Oh man, guys, this is actually potentially really bad then. Zelensky is a true blue liberal, right? I mean, he's been doing the, you know, military commander bit because it, it plays to the optics, but ideologically, he's been a pretty decent grounding force. If Ukrainians start to trust military uh, officials more than their actual leaders, that could be really, um, uh, that could be bad. So Zeluzhny clashed with the Pentagon on his strategy. A Ukraine's top general ran out of road both in Kiev and in Washington. Zeluzhny has had a target in his back for Ukraine's military failure to make more progress since the Russians last year. So wh what does the Ukrainian population want? Do they want to abandon the Donbass? Because given how things are right now, uh, the Donbass and Crimea are becoming increasingly unlikely goals. So conscription is unpopular, but the leader, the, the military leader who wanted conscription to continue the war is, is what what were Zeluzhny's goals not to take the Donbass or Crimea you know like what was it was it like he just wants to retake he wants to take it so Z Zeluzhny also wants to take I think they want to retake the Kherson and Zaporizhia oblasts okay well that makes sense I suppose it's easier to take those than the Donbass and Crimea probably and I'd, I'd, I'd imagine a senior Ukrainian military official who, like others in the story, was granted anonymity to speak frankly, says there has been frustration building among the upper ranks of the military that Zeluzhny spends a lot of time on Facebook showing off how he is doing something while little changes um, tactically or strategically along the front lines. Yikes. Hmm. Do you think then... Do you think Zeluzhny is... Uh, hmm. Ah, man, this is a really rough situation for Zelensky. That's, that's, this is very not good, I gotta say. 84% of Ukrainians opposed to making any territorial concessions to Russia, even if it means prolonging the war. Okay, so most Ukrainians want to take back all the territory, but they don't want to be conscripted for it. So if Zeluzhny has promoted a more defensive attitude towards the war, how does that make any sense? Are you telling me that the population of a war-torn country is a little bit incoherent and inconsistent in what they want from their military leaders? I will have Dylan on soon. That's the plan, at least. Isn't it pretty hard to launch a coup during wartime, though? No, it's actually the easiest time to launch a coup. Um, times of great national crisis are the easiest times by far. Ліський напрямок дуже жорстокий. Південні напрямки, виклики Харківського регіону та наші можливості. Можливості України цього року, третього року повномасштабної війни. Ми повинні зробити саме цей рік вирішальним, вирішальним для досягнення українських цілей у війні. Росія не може просто змиритись з існуванням but wouldn't it hurt the war effort, though? People who are conducting a military coup probably aren't that concerned with the negative outcomes of their decision to do that, in a lot of cases, I'd imagine. Ukraine. And the only fact of the independence of our country. But the government will be able to fight with our strength. The experience of two years of this war has convinced the only Тільки поразки Росії наближають мир. Кожен рік цієї війни має свій характер. Перший рік вистояли, почали повертати своє. Довели світу, що Росія може програвати. Другий рік цієї війни 
It's hard to have an informed opinion on this, but as a general rule, let's just say I don't trust military officials with ambition to become the leader of a whole country. Yeah, that's true. As a general rule, generals with political ambitions, that tends to be a pretty dangerous combination. You know, there are exceptions, but for the most part, like the general to president pipeline is not one, uh, you know, even if it's not a military coup, even if they just have like an aspiration. Yes, I know Eisenhower was relatively fine, but like, you know, throughout history, there have been plenty of examples of that sort of thing going very poorly. Плинули. На суспільний настрій. Українці стали рідше говорити про перемогу, але український дух не втратив віри у перемогу. Україна зберігає свій історичний шанс. The guy they replaced him with, Sirsky, is way worse. He basically copied Wagner tactics for impractical gains south of Bakhmut that were somewhat even reversed recently. I don't really know what that means. I don't know much about this new guy uh, that has been made uh, leader of the army, army chief. Ah, from Reuters. Reuters coming in with the listicle to help us out. Five facts about Oleksandr Sirsky, uh, Ukraine's new army chief. He was given the call sign Snow Leopard. So he's a furry. Реалізувати його – наш обов'язок. Цей рік повинен стати часом України. Часом, коли кожен український воїн знатиме, як і раніше, що українська держава Українська армія здатні перемагати. Я вдячний генералу Залужному за два роки захисту. Я вдячний за кожну перемогу, яких ми досягли разом і завдяки усім українським воїнам, які героїчно витягують цю війну на собі. Відверто поговорили сьогодні про те, що потребує змін в армії. Термінових змін. Я запропонував генералу Залужному бути і надалі разом в команді української держави. Я буду вдячний за його згоду. Сьогодні я ухвалив рішення про оновлення керівництва Збройних сил України. Це не про прізвище і тим більше не про політику. Це про I man, I I would really defer to what Dylan Burns has to say on this because of course he knows way more than me. I don't think that Zelensky would be acting purely out of um I guess political uh I don't think this would be done purely because he fears Solzhenyi's, um like political prowess or whatever. Yeah, there's probably a bunch of very complicated, interwoven uh, priorities. I, I don't know. It, it seems like a tough spot to be in, though. That's for sure. We now know that Zelensky published this op-ed on CNN after he was told he's being fired. This article was written before his dismissal. Huh. In conclusion, in 2024, we must focus our main efforts in three areas. Creating a system to provide our armed forces with high-tech assets, introduce a new philosophy of training and warfare which takes account of restrictions and assets and how they can be deployed, and mastering new combat capabilities as soon as possible. We already possess capabilities to eliminate the enemy and ensure the existence of statehood. Our goal must be to seize the moment to maximize our accumulation of the latest combat capabilities which will allow us to commit fewer resources to inflicting maximum damage on the enemy, to end the aggression and protect Ukraine from it in the future. It's interesting that he wrote this after knowing he was going to get sacked. This is something we'll revisit in the future.